In today's episode of Europa Universalis 4, you'll see how this one provincial Oda, thanks to the new Japanese quest tree, which is really big, it becomes Emperor of China. And here I mean, it will truly become the Emperor of all China. And that in over 100 years. Hello guys, this is Lucas Oda, one of the Japanese daimyos located in Japan. He has incredibly strong military ideas, but, and also, ideas very strong to carry out all kinds of conquests. And all in all, it's my favorite daimyo in the area. Japan has been heavily changed in the new pet, but this already applies to the period after the formation of Japan. At the beginning, Shogun and Daimyo basically have the same old quests we had before. They only change for him when we unite Japan. Something has changed here too. Additionally, we can recruit four samurai units. So really quite expensive infantry. Reinforced cost plus 50% is quite a lot. And I don't know if it's worth the discipline. Today's episode will have two parts. The first part will be about the proper unification of Japan and the other for the rest because many tutorials do it wrong. Let's send one of our free merchant to collect trade in Beijing because it will give us some amazing 0.01 ducat. As for the states, I have nothing new here and we normally give out one monarchy point from each group. Japan is a country that will need a lot of them since I don't plan to, strangely enough, lead a lot of conquests in the beginning. Then I take their land, we also do the mission. Um, but we're going to do it right now because I will hunt for a cheaper advisor, either administrative or of course a cheaper military advisor. We will need one of these two. That's why we take loans, we recruit an army for it and I, I found a cheaper administrative advisor. Good too. So I'm cancelling the recruitment right away and I'm paying off all my loans. I know that showing every episode is quite secondary, but rather I wanted to reach you. That's how it should start in this game. Another thing is rivals. They are very important in our campaign in Japan. So we're not picking them yet. I will show you how to choose them later. Send one diplomat right away to improve relations with Ashikaga. We want to have the best possible relationship with the Shogun. I don't know if Ashikaga's behavior has changed in the new patch now, but before that, they killed our ruler. He declared war on us when we were too big and so on. So we'd better keep a positive relationship with him. The rest of the privileges he distributes to the following. Cheaper advisors, religious diplomats, spiritual education. In a military state we want to have bushy officer rights, supremacy over the crown, cheaper advisors. And for the townspeople, cheaper advisors and such allow merchant guilds economic freedom. I don't know if this will work for us or not. There is one more privilege I want to give later for cheaper construction of buildings and giving us taxes. Possibly even prestige from naval battles. This tempts me a bit, but also maybe at a later stage. We found a cheaper administrative advisor. We're recruiting him right now. In fact, now we have to wait until December 12th. Ah, only of course we employ a free company. I'm making our ruler a general. And honestly, the more in siege, the better. And in shock, there are two most important stats for us. This one is quite okay. We don't have any alliances yet. December 13th, and we are dealing with our rivals right now. We take any country that we have on the list as rivals. Any, regardless of whether he likes us or does not like us. And who has no allies. Yes, I'm about to click through everything except the recording. Uh, I avoid countries that have fortresses built, so Toki and Hatakeyama are out. These are my rivals. I'm lucky here because this and that, they have a mutual alliance, so I'll take them down at once. Initially, we fight wars only for humiliation. We don't conquer, we humiliate. Japan needs a lot of monarch points at the start, and that's what we care about. Oh, my onion wars that are not onion wars, but I like to call it that. Tension. In the provinces, we leave one unit each so that the enemy does not recruit new troops. We break our opponents one by one. I'm going with another war. And yes, you see, I have a little too much troops, but we're not worried about that. I don't pay too much. Now we end the wars as follows. If we have the opportunity, click on show strength, deal 20 prestige points, and that's 100 points of each type, 300 total and 30 power projection, which we will get here and when we're over 50. We will also start getting one monarchy points each. This is a super strong option. Unfortunately, we won't take the money. Pity, this beginning is simply played on loans, but these points are worth it. As Imagawa did not attack directly, it is here that I can only take a peace treaty in which I humiliate the enemy. What will we use for error points? So it's nice to have it. But how is that? Does show strength count for that now? It didn't matter before. Could it have been before? I don't remember. 
then I only take money from them. Now I don't need to have a humiliate. And in seven years, we will attack them again. Well, okay, war one, another show strength country. We have already earned 200 points in total in place of a rival who has been conquered. We choose another country. It's gonna hurt me. And if we have the opportunity, we will finish off the enemy's fleets to increase our own. Without building this fleet, I blocked the enemy's ports. So let's just take money from him. And the main objective of the war will give us points. And in general, you have a choice here. You can or be the first in the world to introduce virtually any of the technologies and get innovation or save your points for the Renaissance. I prefer to do it. The Renaissance should appear in two to three years. Oh, and we're going to need a lot of those points unless I'm so lucky that I will be able to take on new rivals all the time. Well, that's what I understand. We got more points. The strongest country in the area is Hosokawa, so he can be our ally. And great, the Renaissance arrived in Monferrado. That's why we're launching the upgrade privileges. We have state support and we want to earn as much as possible from dies. So we want to upgrade with diplomatic points first, then one military point. And again, diplomatic, military, diplomatic. And so in a circle, remember that at level 15, we can increase the infrastructure, which is very important, even though the infrastructure development has been severely weakened. And then exactly the same. I'm doing my first mission and I forgot to make sure we have some mission to develop cheaper, but rather not from countries where we can't do show strange. So we take war reparations, money to pay off loans. We can also try to burn their capitals. In addition, we can force them to remove the rival to get prestige and another 100 points go to us. I don't even count how many uh, extra points it was. We had a renaissance and we lead him for this magical symbolic one ducat. And as much as possible, then we can develop the technology normally. We even make money. We have become so powerful that we have lost our rivals. That's why we take more. This time we can afford Wesugi, which has a fortress. Shogun annoys me, really. Another 100 points. Well, as you can see, I have difficulty further conquest. Yes, I feel a little threatened. So yes, my next goal will be conquest. Okay, entire. Luckily, he was perfect around me and not even the fort is on. How nice of him. All right, I'm building galleys for us. They here are the best for those close seas in Japan. We can easily double the limit of our fleet and they'll be useful for besieging those coastal fortresses sooner rather than later. First government reform. Let me tell you honestly. It works great on Japan, Noble Officer Corps, where we get yearly army tradition, possibly manpower again. This will also work very well for us, but at a later stage of the game, possibly coins, mostly in the first era, especially since we have regional councils. So plus 65% of taxes, that's really a lot. We eat all Toki, literally. Oh, uh -huh. I have some more exhaustion, but we're reducing it. What a rumor spread. Well, I wouldn't take them, although here it really tempts me. Oh, okay. Well, 150 points. What? Toki survived here? Ooh. Hmm. I think I'd rather that everyone likes me. The later they come into a coalition against me, the better. Unfortunately, I fear this may be our last humiliated rival and the last dot. Well, now that we have the chance, now we take the fifth level of military technology. This is usually the moment for me. Fifth technology where I just start conquering territories. Ha! Which ideas to take? All right, I got to know everyone. Probably still the best combination would be administrative, diplomatic. Here to conquer China, which I plan, of course. It turned out, you got me. You didn't see it at all from the introduction and from the thumbnail. But let's use these courtly ideas because for upgrading them, we get an increase in the mandate. The other upgrades don't seem so strong to me, but I can be wrong, of course. Plus, they scale nicely with a few other ideas. Here, I'll take some that you'll see later. This advisor's face, priceless. So, ooh, well, now it will definitely be the last war for the points. Definitely, because I have no more rivals, nor are there any larger countries, honestly, from the ones he's attacking right now. Uh, and more points. Now, definitely the last. Can I join the coalition? Tempting, but why do I need this? Oh, I really want one as a replacement. It was worth killing the previous three. Expand the coca. That's the least that this mission sounds like. Well, the coalition is starting to form, but I might be able to conquer them all before they join the coalition. I don't know about you, but in, in Shogun's place, I'd be afraid of that order. More than that, I'm not stopping at that country. Hey, where are you running to? Come here. The first development of the era. Ha, all in all a good question. Well, maybe when they draw expansion, we'll take, let's break up the alliance. It won't be of any use to us anymore. Well, now you can say that. 
half of Japan is under my boot. And let's change the focus to administration points. I should have done it sooner. Now I have to wait a while until my periods of peace come to an end and we go on with the conquest course. All reflected areas are added to states and then we will reduce their autonomy by about this minus, which means we're going to have a hell of a ride. Hey, have they done something to these cultures here? I bet there used to be a lot more of them, unless I missed some modification. I'm really looking forward to the riots that are about to be here. Oh my god, what is this autonomy here so gigantic? Well, okay, this means that we launch an edict on autonomy everywhere. Her! And the incidents begin. I wonder if they changed anything with it. Because now we're going to decide, will we change our country attitude to a more open one or more closed? This is one of those things. The second thing, that depending on what we're doing here, we will get some bonuses. And these bonuses are normally peaked at Wikipedia. And there's nowhere else to look at them. Really. Without much trouble, we conquer Hosokawa. But this gives us such a coalition that we must, however, declare war on all other countries. Yay! How pleased I am with this, that I'm not the one suppressing their rebellion. The worst thing right now is the riot suppression while I am at war. It's actually weird that I have over 10 provinces and the emperor hasn't declared war on me yet. Let me know how you are. Did you manage to conquer most of Japan without war or not? Nice of them. Discipline. Yeah, this is the moment in which the emperor should have guessed that something was wrong here. And unfortunately, it needs governing. Because I'm over his limit and from what I can see, Bashi has the least influence. So here we take this governing. Well, basically there are three nations left. Yamana, Otomo and Ashikaga. Unless I'm still counting them. And of the Waku. And time for the final war. Well, almost the emperor will be at the finale. Would you believe I recaptured the territory from the rebels first and now I'm taking them a second time? Hey, this reform on Ming will be very strong. And honestly, I should go or centralization because we have an accelerated decline in autonomy or in this to increase our tax income. Well, 50% of six gold is three gold. Always something. Possibly accelerate the progress of our reforms could be interesting too. I didn't notice this before that we have something like this in Japan. Since when is that possible? I think emperor that you already know what's coming. It couldn't have ended any other way. The shogun's army is broken. And what remains independent daimyo? Wow, I can have five units. Ming, from love to hate. My king had really good timing. Unfortunately, the successor has a poor chance of successor. We eat the emperor. Look, I don't have to fight for my own freedom. The fall of Kyoto. A lot of strange things have happened here now. Yay! Ooh, I got points. 50 each? Hey, how nice! I became a shagun. <laughs> yes, I have a lot of vassals left. Grayed out, meaning I don't have any. Well, but that means we've unified Japan. And I'll get 100 points of each type. Uh, how nice. Lots of cool stuff. And, you know, I'll see. I'll take these ideas just to see them. Are they better than Oda? Or have they been quite average? Infantry, discipline, stability, extra manpower. Cool. Ooh, more samurai. Very nice too. Technology. This is so cool. If we went into innovation under the colonies, less aggressive expansion. If I played with spy ideas, I'd be happy too. Well, but I think I prefer Oda's ideas. I can have an elective monarchy. It's still just out of curiosity, but I definitely prefer Oda's ideas. They will be more useful to us. And now a whole new Japanese tree appears to us. It may not be gigantic, but at least we can do something on it. Now for 25 years, I would do nothing with Japan except to develop our country's economy. And then I would continue to invade Korea. Now you will see what I will do. All in all, from what I see first, I need to develop the Ehigo province to level 8. Then gold will appear here. Well, I don't have it yet. So let's see. There's gold. Cool. It's a shame that it has so much autonomy. And the year 1475, 30 years of gameplay. We have a united Japan which is a little behind. And there is quite a lot ahead. The first idea is almost done. The economy is down, but it's not my fault. It's just that bots everywhere have taken a very large amount of autonomy. Although ultimately, I think I'm going to reform our governments into a mere autocracy because Eastern plutocracy increases your government costs in your states by 25%. And that's quite a lot, especially since we have states everywhere. I know, but it would reduce our governing in trade company regions only should I do with Mingu Trade Company? I don't know. Write me what is your opinion. Restore our color and what will happen? I prefer more glamorous Japan. Better for a thumbnail. Now let's fire the edict on taxes everywhere. Oh, this one. And we start earning. But I'm out of luck. Now the comet takes 100 administrative power points. Let's hire level 3 advisors. 
I haven't had autonomy in a long time. Yes, Red Japan, let's strengthen our trade first. I don't raise stability. I know we could use prosperity, but I'm not picking up stability yet. I want to catch up on technology first. Technology, because we can have workshops now. And as you can see, we have a place to build them. Besides, we're about to have the seventh technology and I will choose another idea. Yes, you guess right, rather military. Either it's just me or they added some monuments in Japan. There weren't that many around, were there? Hey, and in this Ming, what is it? Some monument in several provinces? What? Japan's great build-up is in full swing right now. I'm a little tempted to go for the aristocratic idea. Because see, we would stay manpower more on Japan again. And that's always cool, plus additional development and lots of other bonuses. For example, even to reduce autonomy. There's also a very nice policy here for quality ideas. So in general, we would greatly increase the strength of our army. But lately, I've become again, again, a fan of offensive ideas. And so it's possible that I will connect them with spy, then possibly maybe with innovative ones. So we go with offensive ideas, unless to wait for divine ideas because it tempts me. Only it'll take me 11 years. You know what? I'm going to do something crazy. I'll play aristocratic and I will also combine them with divine ideas. Because offensive, let me tell you honestly, I still have very good generals. And as Japan, we will fight a lot of wars. So the tradition of the army will be high anyway. Ooh, we have a nice mission for colonization, but I'm not planning to play it this time. I think I'll make another colonization campaign out of this. What is this? Heavy ships fraction? This mission is very cool and it is connected to our level of isolationism. Now I know that I had to go to him. Because look, minus 10% of development for 20 years, that's quite a lot. Okay, I think I'll allow this operation to continue because honestly, he's a pretty good general. Okay, let's finally get ready to invade Korea. For this purpose, let's build a flagship. There are no special perks for the Japanese fleet. Wish they could have added something. So I'm going totally standard. And in addition, I will build four more heavy ships, a few galleys and so from 15 transport ships for a total of 20 landings at once. Wow, I wouldn't want to be in Ming's place right now. But for that, we got some unique naval doctrine. I wouldn't say it's OP, but I'll take it. We'll see. Another reform. And so I took it. Okay, time to start. Jin War. So yes, our landing on Korea. We are starting a war and my goal will be to capture this province. Allies have appeared. It's hard. We'll manage somehow. This is the right province, right? Wait, wait, wait. Since when does Korea have a capital here? I have such a WTF. Here is the capital and here is the capital. Why is this icon here? What is this icon anyway? We got the Korean fleet. We won, but it wasn't easy. So sorry, Ming is falling apart. And meanwhile, we got the Korean army as well as the Navy. Okay, no losses is an understatement. Double kill, triple kill. First time seeing something like this. What is the Trupitaka Korean? Okay, but I want it for Kyoto, like nothing. Ouch! Perhaps the creators of these walls did not foresee it, that they will be acquired from this side. After all, that should be a punishment to defend this. Well, the invasion of Korea was quite successful. Okay. I was finally doing Bushido. It happened after the war with Japan. And what do we have here? The Book of Five Ring. And we can either reinforce our ground army or maybe we'll go to the ground army. What? Is it a free Brandenburg gate until the end of the game? It's super strong. It is time to make our first invasion of Ming, but unfortunately with the wrong CB. Because I will only conquer Beijing, our fleet is drowning the Chinese fleet. It even sank it a lot to end the existence of the false emperor. We need all these 25 provinces, uh, seriously, and that big. Uh, because I guess I should conquer Korea first because I'm getting a very nice casus belli. Let's see what the Chinese Imperial Army can do. <laughs> we attack them in the mountains without fear and without fear, we completely destroy them. I'm still waiting for this mission up to the fourth level of isolationism. I would have already gotten a development bonus, but that's when we'll get along so well. You need to make a game of Japan for tall games sometime. Another reef for me here, we have a choice or going um, in Ashigaru, so mass infantry or a development of the early Bushido code. And frankly, it's pretty weak Nani? because I would get uh, maybe one or two more samurai units. I'd rather go with the cheaper mass infantry though. An army tradition from battles, very strong. We establish a foothold in China. Hi, Beijing has changed its name. Well, I think it would be so nice if someone told me that I will get it is another very good modifier to collect for dev costs. Yes, this is for the Edo Jedi mission. Let's also fire up our Japanese golden age. I think it will come in handy during the upcoming process of conquering China. I meant to say that I will finish Korea, but 
Is it that big? Ah, I see, because the capital is a bit developed. All right, what kind of Sino-Korean culture is this? I am very curious about where this culture comes from. And as I already have the era of the Reformation, very early this time, it's like I said, we're getting rid of curtail noble privileges and we change it to some other remaining one. All in all, it will be best to go in manpower. Times of prosperity, to be honest. Cool, where is it anyway? Well, now Korea is completely conquered, which brings us to an end. And I don't know what that gets me with this palace. Can I upgrade it? Ooh, but why? Because he's really cool. And now the Ming War seems to be ahead of us, which I must very, very much win. Only now I have this question. Why would I use Conquest of China, Casus Belli, instead of Mandate of Heaven CB? After all, this is much better. Will someone tell me? Ming is starting to fall apart very slowly. It's even good. And meanwhile, I'm on my way to his fortresses. They fall very quickly. Mandate to rule them all. 20 years, province cost decreased. War score provinces reduced by 10%. The best part is that I already have a religious development from the era. I regret very much that I did not take diplomatic ideas. Because maybe I'd conquer China for one war. But let's see what happens. Our country has always lived in the shadow of China. The great dragon has always considered himself the center of the world and the rightful ruler of all its territory. By the mandate of heaven itself, we've been forced to accept these ridiculous claims in the past, but the tiger has woken up and he will no longer obey the dragon. You know what? Me, instead of quickly conquering it, I'll go with mandate growth modifier plus 10, because that's what I'm building Japan for, promotion of cultures, and that's the end of the game. Super strong, and we're also becoming the emperor of China. Now, right, we became the celestial empire, 500 governing, nerf to all states. Ooh. Some eunuchs came to me. Cut, cut. Oh, I have to handle it. Okay, a bit of China for one war taken. Slightly, slightly, slightly. I overdid it. And we've got some bums, but we'll deal with it. I guess I'll tell you that the fall of Ming is associated with a series of subsequent events, which strengthen your mandate and give you bonuses or minuses. It's good. Only over 100 now. I guess I need to get the Oirat as our tribute because otherwise I foresee some problems. Aha! <laughs> the temptation to embrace Confucianism as our main religion. At the same time, Shinto is harmonized. Very tempting. Confucianism is now one of the truly powerful religions. And I'll tell you honestly, I'll do it. Only before I reform this one, because it will allow me to debark the province faster. Oh, it hurts. Yes, the Shogun is the son of heaven or the heavens. Ooh, but I don't have Shinto, so I lose our unique developments. That's not good. Yes, and I lost 25% of my religious costs against Ming. But Ming is falling apart anyway, so it doesn't matter. Let's strengthen our bureaucracy. And this reform has changed for me. Look, I changed to something like this. And Shigeru Regiment changed to reformed samurai for me because I think I did that mission here. Oh, that one. And I started a new era of samurai. Ooh, I can have even more. And the adoption of Confucianism caused this mission to give me its best bonus. Okay, and cool, Oriat becomes our tribute. Now you just need to improve your relationship with him. And very much. Who said loyalty can't be bought? Wow, here's a whole new tree for me. Hey, this state is really screwed. He's increasing corruption everywhere. Someone wants to conquer the Mamluk? Why not? All right, we are going to conquer with Cassus Belli unifying China. Because then, by fighting such wars, we accelerate the growth of our mandate. And it's worth leaving one, two countries alone, to have this modifier. We all know that Taiwan has always been Japanese. You have proof of it here. Hey, well, really, I have a quarry here. Hey, I have some quarries everywhere. OMG, have I done a mission wrong? That here I could get quarry for these provinces? No. I get quarry immediately after conquering this. Since when does this work? Let's go, I see. All right, here it is written. How much do I earn here in this empire? It's a total massacre. But to be honest, I've been thinking hard. Can't you collect the trade company production bonus here? Goods production. But I'm too lazy. Ming's downfall. And beautiful. Red China. Which allows us to do some very cool missions now. Nobody saw it, of course. Let's reform. Which will streamline my bureaucracy. I really only missed these two provinces from Oriat. Who is my tribute? Uh, but this is a really strong modifier. The worst part is that Oirat has more epic name than me. And if you want to see a country that really conquers hard, then watch this episode from the Holy Ottoman Empire.